What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Savatech once again, and today we're going to take a look at the ASRock Z370 Killer SLI motherboard, so stick around. Welcome back. So if you're looking at buying or upgrading your PC anytime soon, you're probably going to be debating between the 8th gen Intel processors and, of course, the AM4 platform. The good news is, is you have plenty of options out there now thanks to the latest and greatest Ryzen processors and it's going to actually be a little bit of a chore picking which one to go with. The thing that you're going to get out of the AMD side right now is decently priced motherboards that you can still overclock on. On the Intel side, unfortunately, you're still going to be stuck with the Z series being the only overclockable series for motherboards. This does drive the price up. However, if you're looking for one that's not priced too ridiculously, this could be one of your options. While the power phase design is only 10 power phases compared to the better power phase design on, of course, the Fatality and Tai Chi series from ASRock. It's more than efficient for any sort of overclocking on K-series chips, including the 8350K and, of course, all the way up to the 8700K. And while this motherboard does brag to be one of the more budget-friendly options, it isn't short on features. In fact, you can pay a little bit of a premium and upgrade to the SLI slash AC version, which comes with the of course, AC wireless. As a PC gamer, most people are going to be hardwired, so that might not be something you're interested in, and it's very nice that ASRock provides an option that does not include it. If you look around the rest of the board, a lot of the features are still here, including USB-C, USB 3.1, even including a front header for USB 3.1, and of course, DDR4 that supports all the way up to 4266 overclock, which is one of the highest in this price range. Pretty awesome stuff. A couple of other notes is this motherboard doesn't just have the Realtek NIC, as it does have an Intel Gigabit NIC, which is awesome, and that you are going to be able to support two-way SLI and Crossfire, and it does actually have a total of six PCIe slots. While there isn't currently a Pentium available for these motherboards, Later on down the line, this could drop in price, and when the Pentium versions of the 8th series Intel CPUs come out, we could have a decent mining motherboard right out of the box, seeing as I do know it's been kind of hard to get a hold of mining motherboards thanks to all of the, well, miners buying them. So, well, there's always other options I want to look at, and this could be an option for a 6 GPU mining setup or mining rig. It's nice to have this already in stock, so when we do have availability of the latest Pentium processors for the 8th gen from Intel, I'll be able to test and let you guys know. It is good news that in the BIOS I was able to find that it does support above 4G decoding, which means that is right up the alley with, of course, any sort of mining motherboard features that you want to have included. The other option is a buy PCI slot speed or generation setting. So you can go buy all of the PCI slots, including the buy one slots, and set them to PCI Gen 1, 2, or 3, which also tells me that we're already way ahead of the game compared to some other motherboard manufacturers for mining. Now, if you were going to mine on this motherboard right now, the cheapest processor you can go with would be the 8100, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. As I do know, a lot of, like I said, these mining motherboards are going out of stock, and I'm pretty confident that this one will get the job done. Of course, if there are other options, such as ASRock's own BTC Plus motherboard, of course, go ahead and grab that as it should be around the same price, but currently you're talking about out of stock pretty much everywhere, and if they do come in stock, you're looking at spending over 200 bucks on those, which just seems counterintuitive from the get-go. Now this motherboard also features two M.2 slots in very strategically placed locations that will not sit directly under your graphics card and get all hot, which I'm very happy to see. And it does support RGB LEDs, including an RGB header, as well as an RGB light underneath the ASRock covered portion right here. And for this price point, that's definitely notable. In the box, you'll find the usual suspects, including a quick start guide, a motherboard manual, SATA cables, and of course a throw in here, an SLI bridge. Now that pretty much comes in every other motherboard package or box, so it's nothing really of note, but worth mentioning just so you guys know and can be sure that you'll grab it. Now it did come shipped quite well, but I did get it shipped from ASRock themselves, so that's no surprise there. 
The box did include the motherboard on top of a foam packaging material inside an anti-static bag. Now, while you guys might not enjoy the killer SLI branding reminiscent of 80s heavy metal, of course, the motherboard has a nice sleek look that does not have any killer branding on it and comes in a nice sleek black and gray color scheme that should match any build you're looking for, which is always good when we're talking about products that are going to be in the more budget friendly range. I hope this video was helpful and covered all your questions about the ASRock Z370 SLI motherboard. If you have any more, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you next Tuesday.